Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. Alleluia. Alleluia. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Can you walk up to one or two people close to you and tell them good morning? It's good to see you this morning. Make sure you are generous with your salutations. Good to see you, Pastor. Good to see you, my brother. Good to see you, my sister. In Jesus' name we pray. Again, I want to thank His Lordship, the Bishop, Bishop Foreman and his wife. I went back, you know, um, to rest yesterday. And I kept meditating myself on some of the things that the Lord revealed to us. And as always I would say, God always wants to move. I said this, I think it was in the US or somewhere. I said, revivals have no dates. The day the vessels are ready, revivals come. Revivals have no dates. They depend on the alignment and the yieldedness of the vessels so when you see god moving across taraba is because he has found you is because he has found a vessel the day he moves is not the day he wanted to move is the day the vessels became aligned enough to allow his program come are we together now to become ready that becomes the date for revival spirit of the living god we pray that you help us this morning we thank you for the honor you have given us to communicate your counsel. And we thank you for helping us yesterday. We obtain grace for that which you will be speaking to us on this morning. And in the name of Jesus, we submit to your wisdom. To you be all the glory. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. Let me humbly request that if you can... Um, do well to get the teachings for this conference particularly yesterday's teaching um, if it's on sale do well to purchase it after or at least if it's available make sure you get it and settle down listen to it again for the purpose of edification hallelujah I have listened to it myself from yesterday night to this morning I have listened to the teaching hallelujah so this morning we'll take it a step further. Yesterday was laying a foundation to my session by helping us to embrace the supremacy of God's word. Yesterday was an investigation as to God's integrity. And by God's grace, we we're able to establish from our teaching yesterday that God is reliable. He can be depended upon and that his word must gain supremacy above any every and all experiences hallelujah this morning still connecting to what we're discussing in this conference um i trust that it will be a brief session a prayer meeting to warm our hearts as we prepare for the night but i want us to go to matthew chapter 6 We'll be discussing from Matthew chapter 6. I'm teaching you how to come into partnership with God to birth his purposes. Yesterday we established that the word of God is all powerful. We established that when God speaks, it is because he intends to bring that word to pass. But now this session will show us the dynamics how the speakings of God, how the verdicts of God, how the word of God and how the will of God finds expression within a person's life, within a territory. The surprising thing about dealing with the dynamics of the word of God is that on one hand, after you examine the potency of the word, you must understand the law of conversion, the system by which divine realities become manifest in the life of the saints here and now 
if you fail to understand that dynamics you can have the word of god all potent as it is but it will never make be made manifest in your life so i'm teaching this morning very briefly and like i said it's a prayer meeting so uh, let's prepare our hearts to pray while i teach enforcing god's will enforcing god's will i want to show you how to come into partnership with god and particularly we're looking at the prayer ministry so i want to show you how to come into partnership with the word of god in and through prayer how to birth supernatural possibilities how to birth the verdicts of god in the place of prayer that it is not enough to know what god has said you must understand that transportation system how to import divine realities to make them manifest in your life here and now are you ready so jesus is teaching and when we get to matthew chapter 6 he's teaching what we have come to know as the lord's prayer and he says in the preceding verses when you pray pray thus our father which art in heaven he says hallowed be your name then he says thy kingdom verse 10 that means when you pray this should be your focus thy kingdom come your will be done in earth as it is in heaven then he goes to the other discussions but we're focusing on verse 10 he says your kingdom come that is the agenda then he tells you how the kingdom of god comes that everywhere the will of god is allowed to find expression his kingdom comes are we together so your kingdom comes by your will being allowed to find expression notice he never said on earth he said in earth your kingdom come your will be done in earth as it is in the heavens and perhaps you've heard it through my teachings that the first earth that needs to experience the manifestation of the will of god is this earthen vessel called you not the territory so he says your will be done in earth in my life then extending to my territory hallelujah one scripture that has blessed me so much we're going to consider it right now is first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 i did a teaching recently back home and i want us to connect that teaching with matthew chapter that scripture with matthew 6 and verse 10 first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9 very powerful information that god gives us from that scripture paul was mentoring the church in corinth and among the many things he had to teach them he taught them that we are laborers together with god such a privilege looks too good to be true we are laborers together with god together we are not only seated together are we together we are laborers together now a little theological background um believers are classified essentially using two indices when you classify believers you classify believers number one according to their identity and number two according to their function when you classify believers according to their identity you seek to show the extent of their oneness with christ so you use words like the righteousness of god in christ join heirs with christ jesus said i am the vine ye are the branches all of these are expressions they are metaphors that attempts to show how united how grafted the man the believer is to christ and with christ but then when you describe the believer according to function you begin to use words like light salt ambassadors are we together now this one is an active role it doesn't just talk about your identification it talks about the responsibility component to your being a believer now this it's in light of this that paul is teaching the people remember from the pauline epistle he did a sound exegesis helping us understand how our oneness with christ that we're seated together we've been raised up with christ and in continuing his apostolic ministry he's also teaching us that 
we should not just be conscious of our identification we must be conscious of our function and that when it has to do with the will of God when it has to do with the program of God we must have this orientation that we are co-laborers a co-laborer means that it is not all up to God please listen and it is not all up to you God is almighty he can do without men but he has so chosen to live a part that man plays and if you do not understand this you can see all the visions all the prophecies but they may never manifest in your life when it has to do with the manifestation of the word of God the manifestation of the will of God it is important to sustain this orientation that you are a co-laborer a co-laborer are we learning already you are a co-laborer now let me make reference to two important thoughts and then I'll begin to show you the dynamics of allowing divine verdicts to be enforced upon the earth number one every activity upon the earth depends on the cooperation of men this is something you must learn every activity upon the earth whatsoever depends on the participation and the cooperation of men there is no activity that happens upon the earth without the active participation of a man the bible says in psalms 115 verse 16 psalm 115 verse 16 very quickly for sake of time he says the psalm 115 verse 16 media 115 verse 16 it says the heaven even the heavens other versions will say the heaven of heavens belong to the lord are we still there it says but the earth hath he given to the children of men the business of earth is the business of men the moment you are transacting any kind of spiritual reality once it gets to the earth realm man must be part of it else it will not be made manifest this is very important every activity that happens upon the earth depends on the cooperation of men the second thing i need you to know is that the manifestation of god's will and desire upon the earth require the active cooperation of men the manifestation of god's will the manifestation of god's desire upon the earth require the active participation of men in fact it is safe to broadly say that the manifestation of all supernatural programs divine demonic depend on men as midwives satan will have to depend on the cooperation of men to birth his purposes god will have to depend on men to birth his purposes now let me state a very quick disclaimer here because sometimes maybe innocently speaking preachers say we need to give god permission to walk upon the earth the bible does not teach that god does not need any man's permission to walk upon the earth what god needs is man's participation and it is not as a result of weakness he has chosen to incorporate us in his program so that we can enjoy what it means to be co-creators with him man does not need to give god permission to function upon the earth the earth is still the lord's and its fullness thereof are we together so the idea that God needs man's permission um, may be well intentioned, but it's not accurate. God does not need man's permission. However, God needs man's cooperation. And this is not because of weakness on his own part. He has so designed his economy to run that way. Are we learning now? It was Jesus who said, if you will not praise me, I can raise up stones. I can raise up anything inanimate things to praise me 
every time satan wants to move over a life a family every time satan wants to carry out his demonic program he looks for a man every time god wants to birth his purposes over a territory over a life a nation a family he looks for a man psalm 82 and psalm 89 and verse 21 it says i have found david my servant i like that scripture verse 20 now i have found david my servant can you imagine it's as though god is finally rejoicing that i have found a man god is not ashamed to express his vulnerability i am almighty but i finally found a man i have found david my servant now i'm not doing a teaching on this but right here is the secret to the anointing i have found david but the oil will not come on david the oil will come on my servant and it takes a long time for david to become my servant he can find david in 2021 and find his servant in 2031 it takes a journey for david to become my servant but the day david becomes my servant the holy oil can now come on him i'm just digressing to help you you see so don't say god has found me he's looking for two people he's found you but he's looking for himself in you the day he finds his servant then the holy oil can come on you are we learning now so the point here is that god is searching for men and when he finds men he does not he does not hide his joy in the fact that he's finally found a man the bible says in ezekiel chapter 22 now when you read from verse 30 the prophet speaking by the spirit he said and i sought for a man to stand in the gap to make up the hedge for the land so that i will not destroy it but i found none god is still in the business of looking for men listen to me you would think because there are so many preachers because there are so many congregants god should have enough men unfortunately it is not every kind of man god can use being available is not enough there is a transition that must happen are we together from an unbeliever to a believer to a transformed believer to an empowered believer to a witness until you become a witness you are not deployable for god's program so there are many people who are believers but they can't do much for the kingdom they are saved but they are still babes infant in knowledge they have not grown through transformation and there are others who have contended for transformation but without empowerment you will be an ineffective witness you will say many things god can do that never gets done through your life empowerment brings you to a point where you can give defense to the speakings of god that when you say god can heal you will show that god heals when you say god can lift you will show that god lifts when the believer becomes transformed and empowered he stops being called a believer he's called a witness and it is a witness who is given an allocation in god's program there is a space in god's program he sends you as a preacher he sends you as a businessman he sends you as a leader because you are beyond a believer you are still a believer but you have earned a status by reason of your alignment called a witness not everybody can be called a witness just because you want to serve god does not mean you are a witness just because you are posted to go and serve as a pastor does not make you a witness are we learning now so the journey is salvation transformation empowerment and then you become a witness when he sends you you are deployed and your assignment is to defend promote and advance his purposes if you're learning so far say amen So God is still looking for men because his program on earth depends on men. Satan is also looking for men, unfortunately. 
satan is so desperate for men he does not mind stealing what god gives he is that desperate desperate for men there are a kind of men in the bible called wicked and unreasonable people have you read that scripture before that god can deliver you from wicked and unreasonable people those are men satan has found I hope you know that there are people who give themselves to satan willingly to be used like you come to jesus and say i am available there are also others who say satan you have a program here is a man willing to partner with you but in any case whether it is for destruction or it is for growth whether it is for glory or for decline man will always participate in divine supernatural activities for them to find expression upon the earth hallelujah this is very important now there are two ways we enforce the will of god let me go straight to the point this morning there are two biblical ways that every time god speaks every time god announces a verdict on a matter there are two ways to enforce that verdict number one is through partnership in prayer you birth that verdict to be made manifest in prayer number two obedience these are the two biblical pathways to birthing the will of god to birthing the program of god i'll repeat number one is your partnership with god in the place of prayer number two obedience every time you are clear about the will of god and yet you do not see it manifest these are the two things that are wrong every time the will of god is clear that god already spoke to you you are not in doubt he's told you i am visiting your family but it looks like nothing is happening the two areas to consult is whether or not he has found a man who can pray in partnership or he has found obedience these are the places for diagnosis if you ever see the will of god wanting in your life something is wrong you have not known how to do business with god in the place of prayer or number two you do not understand the dynamics of obedience obeying the principles that allow for the manifestation of that verdict do you understand this so far so the word of god like i taught you yesterday reveals the counsel of god the bible like we know is a compendium of everything god desires for the believer but whether or not your christian experience will capture the truths contained here depends on knowing how to enforce divine verdicts enforce the will of god it's amazing how many people if you were to have a direct encounter with jesus today he would ask you why you are still at this level spiritually he would ask you why your ministry and your family is yet to experience deliverance because based on scripture based on his will are we together now your victory is finished based on his will your healing is finished based on his will your excelling is finished it's not that god is going to do it the day you are healed is not the day god healed you the day you are healed is the day healing was enforced the day you prosper is not the day god prospers you the day you prosper is the day that you engage the dynamics connected to the manifestation of that blessing are we together now if it is not finished in christ there is no basis for wanting it to manifest you need to understand this the theology of manifestation is that we only manifest that which is finished in christ if it is not finished then it is a waste you cannot manifest that which is not finished in christ hallelujah the bible says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertains unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue he said wherefore whereby he had given us great and exceeding precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust the meaning of that is that god has made everything available unto us but he's made it in christ 
but we must know how to enforce to our lives and in our lives are we together now we're beginning to make sense of the theme because when god spoke to noah and said never again this is my verdict that if you ever see the elements of creation destroying men they are violating a verdict that have put together that means now you'll be surprised to hear this all of the tornadoes and all of the boisterous manifestations of elements like wind and water they are violating this verdict that god gave the meaning of that is that someone got into partnership with wicked spirits to allow that disobedience happen are we together now because by this divine verdict all the elements of nature have been given jurisdiction of their function that they should not function beyond certain ways but when demon spirits come they partner with men remember jesus was going to the other side and we see that these spirits it was not a weather condition at all the bible says there arose a storm of wind it was stopping jesus from joining to the other side you would think it was just a climatic condition it was not a climatic condition else jesus would not rebuke it you don't rebuke a climatic condition you wait for the weather to walk its course and finish but jesus said no this one is a manipulation there are spirits using elements and he said the bible says he rebuked the wind and said shalom be still and everything died down by the time they got to the other side we now see the spirits that partner with the wind because the first person he met was a madman who told the madman jesus was coming are we together now there was no announcement that jesus was coming and the bible says the madman used to stay in caves so what brought him to the seashore as he was waiting to receive jesus the same thing that brought satan to the wilderness when jesus was fasting that means the devil is attentive to the progress of christians you need to know this when god speaks you are not the only one who hears what he's saying satan also hears what god said in fact the word of god is satan's raw material too for attacking you he depends on what god has said to fashion the weapons that destroy you when he came to man the first thing he wanted to hear from man in the garden was what god said because the basis of his attacking adam and eve would depend on what god has said so he said what did god tell you let me know what god told you hallelujah so most believers have said once god has said it i believe it that settles it unfortunately that is not true <laughs> there are many things you will believe that god said and it does not settle it because there is the dynamics of enforcing his word may i remind you that satan is a stubborn spirit one more time that satan is a stubborn spirit else would not be given power even after jesus rose from the dead find out why he gave us power because there is a stubborn spirit determined to act like he did not hear what god said are we together now so although god has spoken great things concerning you satan will still come to your body to plague you with sickness he will still come to your life if in as much as the bible says your children will be mighty upon earth satan will act as if he did not hear what god said and he will try to make arm robbers out of those children but here's what the bible says it says now thanks be to god which causes us to triumph i spoke about the supremacy of the word of god yesterday but make no mistakes about it the word of god delivers the power of god and when that power is engaged it produces wonders if you do not know how to engage with god in partnership through prayer and through obedience you will never be able to birth prophecies in your life therein lies many believers who claim a lot of things that never manifest in their lives do you know god wants to lift you i know 
do you know god wants to bless you this year i know do you know the prophetic word he's given you i know in fact i had a dream correct dream but it may never come to pass do you know why look at me the bible says from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but that reality could not save any man jesus had to walk upon the earth and literally enforce that which was finished in the mind of the father and these were the two keys that jesus used one prayer two obedience even unto death that was what brought our victory every time the word of god seems to be wanting in your life it is because you have not understood the technology for enforcing divine verdicts so when a prophetic word comes that this is the direction god is taking you to when you celebrate that word it does not stop there the next thing is you go back and now learn to engage and this morning i want us to focus on how a man can partner with god how a man can partner with prophecy how a man can partner with the word in prayer like a woman who takes seed the seed that leaves the man to the woman can be a child but it may not be a child whether that child manifests is dependent on what the woman does with that seed am i right on that yes partnership with god so i've said that enforcing the will of god depends on two factors number one partnership in the place of prayer and number two obedience let's look at prayer what exactly does prayer do what does it do why do we have to pray the will of god is it just a ritual what do we do at the point of prayer what are we really doing so when i take the word of god and engage it in the place of prayer what is really happening to me i will tell you please listen the prayer ministry when it has to do with manifesting divine realities is predicated upon this revelation listen carefully number one god gave man a will please listen carefully god gave man a will now i don't have the time to begin to describe for you what it means to be a man because the word man uh there is a spiritual definition to the entity that you call man not every one of god's creation can be called man you cannot call a lion man you can't call angels man although they are god's creation there is a condition you must satisfy to be called a man are we learning to be called a man number one you must first be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be man number two that spirit must be hosted in a body if that spirit is not hosted in a body compatible to the earth it cannot be called man are we together now that spirit hosted in the body must have the solical faculties to allow for expression both in the realm of the spirit and the physical realm any creature that has this combination is called man do you understand me now so not every of god's creation can be called man you can't call angels man you can't call animals man although they are all alive but they cannot be called man so for you to be called man is an honor you must be a spirit and that spirit must be domiciled in a body having the solical faculties of will emotion and intellect if these tripartite conditions do not coexist in any creature you cannot be called man are we learning now now please look up there's a reason why i said all that the will of man is a very powerful mystery because that will god gave you can send you to hell that will god gave you can send you to be with the lord that will god gave you can redefine your destiny that will god gave you can destroy you even though god is almighty he submits to the way man uses his will 
that at the expense of your eternal destiny god will still allow you to choose whether you are interested in him or not if i were god having died for the sins of man i would not even allow you to decide whether you want to choose me or not you must choose me are we together now i can't go through that labor and die and tell you to steal you no no i don't have that time you must choose me this is me for you but that jesus went through all of that journey and yet he gives you a chance and you can walk before him and said you died i'm aware of your blood i'm aware of your tears i choose as an act of my will to reject you and he will respect you even though he sees you going to hell this thing called the will is powerful if you do not know this you will not know why believers pray animals don't pray are we together now yes you will know why he told men to pray please help me the handkerchief thank you he spake a parable luke 18 and verse 1 that men men there is a there is a particular description of his creature that he mandates they pray men he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint do you know why the highest demonstration of your will is in the place of prayer that will that god gave you the power to choose the power to accept the power to reject all happens within the place of prayer it is in the place of prayer that you verbalize your partnership with god for or against your destiny this is very powerful that when you want to enforce the will of god you cannot enforce the will of god until you use the god-given gift he's given you the will the power to choose god sets before you life and death he sets before you blessing and cursing he sets before you advancement and a possibility for retrogression he cannot force you but he says choose life and that when you get to the place of prayer as you engage scripture you are agreeing with god that i agree this statement called amen was not something you were supposed to say at the end of prayer the entire prayer itself is how you say amen did you get me now i'm not saying saying amen is wrong but just saying a m e n is not how amen was supposed to be said the act of praying in partnership with god are we together now that is how the believer says amen you don't say amen by reciting it like a chant the act of partnering with god is you saying amen amen means let it be so as it is in the heavens let it be enforced in my life so if you shout amen and you are not prayerful you did not say amen you only said amen to a service but you did not say amen to your destiny are we together he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint in mark 11 from verse 23 24 jesus caused the fig tree and he used the opportunity to teach them how petitions are granted in prayer he says what things soever ye desire when ye pray when ye pray when ye pray verse 20 yes believe thou thou receivest them when you pray when you activate your will in the place of prayer verbalizing your partnership with god entering into agreement with him in the place of prayer he says believe and then you shall have it are we together let me tell you what happens when believers do not pray when believers do not pray as mighty as god is he is limited as far as manifesting his will on earth is concerned and evil will thrive and all kinds of things will thrive in your life and your territory when you do not pray acts chapter 12 
the bible says herod made up his mind to vex certain jews watch this now herod he decided to afflict the people of god obviously under the influence of an antichrist spirit and the bible says james was the first who became a victim they caught james and they beheaded james with the sword verse 3 and he saw that it pleased the jews don't think your downfall brings pain to everybody there are people who actually rejoice it was pre-programmed that when you cry when your children cry that is someone's mission accomplished the bible says because he saw that it pleased the jews how can a man's beheading please other people the next statement is very scary because he saw that it pleased the people and yet the church kept quiet and yet god was still god angels were still there the word was still there he shall put his angels charge over you but we don't see his word we don't see any angel in charge of james he shall put his angels charge over you the word said that even satan quoted it to jesus yet here is a man in trouble and we do not see any angel in charge the bible now says he proceeded further every time you keep quiet watching satan he proceeds further he starts with your health headache and you keep quiet he proceeds further he proceeded further to take peter also he touched your finances and you carelessly gave an answer i said no it's just the economy he proceeds further to your health are we together now watch what happened verse 4 and when he had apprehended peter he put him in prison with four quaternions of soldiers that after easter he will bring him and behead him just like james the church now said we made a mistake with james we will not repeat that mistake with peter let me show you what the church did shout verse 5 with all your heart are you ready one to go stop 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 but he was kept in prison just like james under the same condition with the same possibilities for deliverance the difference was that in one case they folded their arms and said how can i lie sharia whereas in another case they said i must wake up i can't watch my children die like this i must wake up i know what god has said that Jalingo is not a cost land. Why is the land not delivering its blessing? It destroyed my father, destroyed my grandfather. But, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Read verse 5 again, please. One to go. Uh huh. But prayer, hold on hold on just walk with me but prayer i like that something was introduced that was not there before but prayer but prayer it is true that the prophecy about you dying this year would have come to pass but prayer something was introduced it is true that people don't rise in ministry in jalingo but prayer it is true that young men become arm robbers it is true that there are causes that throw down destinies but prayer but prayer but prayer added to the situation makes a difference but prayer but prayer but prayer what you saw about me may be right based on your vision but prayer let me introduce prayer to that vision and you watch the power of god it is true that it looks like it's difficult to find helpers in jalingo but prayer but prayer someone say but prayer there's no such thing as hopeless but prayer the church folded their arms when they caught james god if you want to move you can move and he said no i don't walk that way 
I'm seeking for a man to come into partnership with me. Can you imagine? I can imagine the angels waiting. I can imagine God on his throne. The angels are saying, engage us. We are waiting. And nothing happened till James died. Can I tell you the truth? The more you know the Lord, the more you weep at many things that you allowed happen in your life. That if you had knowledge, not to make you feel bad, but maybe if prayer came in, maybe mama would have still been alive. If prayer came in, maybe you wouldn't have gone through that situation. You are as powerful as your prayer life. You are as powerful as your prayer life. Let's finish the scripture. Verse 5. But prayer was made by the church unto God for him. Now let's see what happened as a result of that prayer. Verse 6. Do you know that everything that happened from verse 6 to verse 11 would have happened right from verse 1. The same angels that came to rescue Peter were there to rescue James. The same miracle that happened to Peter, the church should not have lost James. That was not the will of God. But they did not know how to enforce. But they got angry. The Bible says, while Herod would have brought him forth the same night, the night prayer started, was the night deliverance started too. The night prayer started, was the night salvation started. The Bible says, while Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains, something happened. Verse 7. Give us verse 7, please behold the angel of the lord came question where was that angel where was the angel when james was dying where are the angels while you cry while all that sickness afflicts you when there are no saints to enforce the verdicts of heaven all the resources of heaven look limited and frail this is the kind of power God has given us to exert in the place of prayer. The power to rewrite your possibilities. The power to redefine your destiny. The power to force your life to be consistent with that which is written. This is the correct theology to making a people become a people of prayer. Prayer is not just a channel to satisfy the guilt of not looking spiritual. If that becomes your understanding of prayer, you will pray but you will not be blessed by it because it's not by revelation. But when you understand what is at risk when you do not pray, then it becomes a survival strategy. Hallelujah. The angels came and they tapped Peter. They said, finally, the saints have partnered with the word of God. We are here to enforce this. Stand up and let's go. And the Bible says when Peter got up, the chains fell on their own. Are we together now? He opened the first gate. Opened the second gate. Peter thought he was still in the vision. Do you know while this was happening? Back at the other end, there were saints who were praying. What were they saying? Everything they were saying was what the angel was doing. Lord, deliver Peter. Your word says that there is always a way of escape for the believers. And while they were praying, the angels were there. Bringing credence to the word of God. God's power was there swinging open the prison doors. But something happened that I needed to learn. Go to verse 11 for sake of time. Same The Bible says when Peter was come to himself he said now of a shorty he had sent his angel and delivered me from the hand of Herod and he also delivered me from what? All the expectation. It's not only delivered
danger you can be delivered from through prayer you can be delivered from expectations you don't have to that means there were other troubles scheduled aside from the actual one that has happened are we together now the one that has happened now you can be delivered from but you can also be delivered from expectations let me see who will rise in this family expectations let me see if their children will also eat expectations let me see who will help the woman now that her husband is gone expectations but thou O oh lord are a shield from me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord are a shield from me you're my glory the lifter up of my head but thou O oh lord are a shield from me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord art a shield from me you're my glory the lifter up of my head i like this part you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head when you see men excel it's not because satan is not aware they are there they brought but prayer into the equation of their destinies and so you keep seeing them triumph in spite of the witches triumph in spite of the causes triumph they do ministry like satan does not exist it is the power that is exerted in the place of prayer can i tell you satan is as powerful as your prayerlessness satan is as powerful as your prayerlessness the program of hell is as effective as your prayerlessness show me a people who do not pray with understanding show me a man who do not pray with understanding i show you a man who will remain perpetually a victim of the plot of darkness i made a covenant with my destiny that the, the realm of the spirit will never decide any matter on my life without my participation i will not make the mistake of job i don't know what happened with job decisions were happening in the heavenlies and job was not part of that meeting he was only a victim of that meeting minus me no it won't if it has to do with my destiny god has given me authority to be part of defining my realities so if you have a dream that i died sorry for you and the dream i was not part of it until i participate with that dream based on accurate visions and prophecies i would have died since but prayer but prayer but prayer but prayer if you are satan will you like me but prayer but prayer i hope somebody is getting angry don't fold your arms and allow things go wrong you are seeing the signature of darkness on your children on your ministry you have a great ministry but there is a covering cast that keeps misrepresenting you and you are just folding your arms you are joking the day you get angry in your spirit I desire to come to you even I call once and again but Satan hindered us favor would have reached you since January but Satan Satan got to the ears of your destiny helper before you and said a lot of things that should not be by the time you got there a report had reached their ears I hope you believe what you are hearing 
let me tell you the truth the bible says right from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom advances forcefully and it is by force by engaging force are we together sir isaac newton postulated a few laws of mechanics and the first of the laws let's refresh our minds again physics that everybody remains in a state of rest or uniform motion except compelled by an external force to act otherwise that's his first law of mechanics in other words if you leave this thing there theoretically after 1000 years it will go like that time does not change anything one day go better is nonsense the day you get angry and push your destiny forward i told you revivals have no dates the day somebody becomes angry and comes into partnership with heaven that is the day you will see the salvation of the lord but prayer was made by the church unto god for him when you pray you exercise your will you demonstrate your partnership you say amen to many things and you say never again to other things this never again statement happens through the platform of prayer you'll be learning that tonight you don't shout and say never again just carelessly it is in the place of prayer never again will all the women be the ones who become men in this family never again will all the successful men keep dying after they graduate never again never again never again never again if i came from a poor family never again poverty would not come out of me no never again will i be called to serve the purposes of god and your voice is being shot upon the mountains never again that's what happens in the place of prayer hallelujah you are not the only one who comes from a family where nobody has risen we all came from similar families those who force their portion to come to them are the ones who have testimonies today those giving excuses do you know that giving excuses is a demonic manipulation itself yes sir it's a strategy to keep you bound because satan knows the day you release your will in prayer my soul why art thou cast down there is always a way why is help far from you there is always a way why is jalingo not opening for your ministry there is always a way why do i keep crisscrossing my destiny helpers and they act like they were not commanded look at me look at me when elijah was done with the brook cherries and the lord told him my supplies here is over go to zarifath here's what what god said i have commanded he didn't say i have advised i have commanded by the time elijah met the woman she did not look commanded what are you here to do and the prophet said are you joking i left a strong word I took the risk to trek that long because God told me he commanded. You thought the woman would say, oh, you are the one, please come. Here's your morsel of meat. No, no. You need to know how God speaks. God can tell you I have given you Jalingo. And you step in and it acts like there's no space for you there. But prayer. Prayer begins like a spiritual surveyor system where you start marking out your own space within the territory if god has sent you here there is a portion of relevance for you but you will have to engage in prayer are we together now i'm saying this because we are going to pray oh this morning this is supposed to be a charge i don't know what you call it whether it's sermon is but assume it's a charge this is a charge my assignment was to come and charge us so that we'll pray never again if i have begged for bread my children will not beg for bread never again if you were born with a particular infirmity it is evil to transfer pain to your children 
are we together the character of fatherhood according to scripture is not having children is giving good gifts good gifts if ye been evil know how to give good gifts good gifts a cause is not a good gift pain is not a good gift mediocrity is not a good gift transferring battles is not a good gift no there are battles that children have no business fighting except that their parents did not stay to enforce victory they handed it over and you find young people fighting battles they have no business fighting but in this conference god has already spoken to us we are not in doubt is the theme of this conference is a verdict never again it's your assignment to take it to the place of prayer and begin to walk that prophecy never again never again there is a covenant that makes the forces the elemental forces of creation to not fight me why is the weather fighting me why is the earth fighting me why will i eat from the earth and be sick from it there is a verdict i have a league with the stones they are not supposed to fight me the sun should not smite me by day the moon should not smite me by night no enchantment should happen with the waters and the elements of creation against me there is a covenant of peace with the elements of creation listen the supernatural cannot manifest on earth until it partners with the elements of creation every manifestation of the supernatural depends on its partnership with the elements of creation light fire water sound the earth there is no manifestation of the supernatural that happens upon the earth outside of his partnership with these elements and these are the same elements that are being manipulated in the place of witchcraft to fight men so the psalmist said the sun shall not smite you nor the moon by night because wizardry consults these powers and uses them to manipulate people go and read the book of esther and see how the date was selected for the annihilation of the jews they did not choose the date by intelligence they conjured the powers cosmic powers and arrived at that date satan is still using that strategy till today he knows the advantage of the elements of creation when people conjure water conjure land earth and all kinds of things there is a covenant that i have with the elements of creation they should not fight me if you call my name on water or whatever it is if i have understanding and i know how to enforce it you only wasted your time but that demonic thing is as powerful as my prayerlessness don't just say nothing will harm, harm me no it starts with a consciousness but you must engage in the place of prayer are we together never again i came to annoy somebody this morning a holy anger never again will my child serve the devil never again will i be in debt to the point that they will come to take my two children my husband may be gone but there is a way out of it never again will i be at the edge of compromise because ministry is not working never again will my voice be silenced not when he's placed oil upon my head never again will i lack the help of men there are too many people in jalingo to partner with prophecy over my life too many people is someone learning now too many people listen to me ladies and gentlemen whatever has destroyed your prayer life God brought you here this morning to fan back the ambers of genuine prayer some of you pray but you pray and miss your prayer is rather copying prayerful people so that you don't feel guilty you will still be defeated that mentality has defeated you already we pray because God gave man a will and it is in the place of prayer you have a chance to exercise that will the earth hath he given to the sons of men if he says thy kingdom come everything that represents the influence of heaven 
God wants to see it in the life of this man. It's true. It's a secret I have found and it's changed my life. Hmm. Show me a man that knows how to pray with understanding. Change every full stop in front of that man's destiny to a comma because you're about to see a story continue. Show me a man that knows how to pray. Whatever you have concluded over that man, you will soon bury your head in shame. Turn the full stop to a comma because the story does not finish. Show me a defeated family but that they hold hand together and begin to pray with understanding. Fervent, effectual prayer. Heartfelt, word compliant prayer. I show you victory that is imagined. I show you victory that is imagined. Some of you here, by your divine ordination, you should have entered certain offices by now. But your prayerlessness is still making you drag yourself like somebody who was barely saved January. And yet you've been saved for the past 10 years. There are certain things that should have been activated within your spirit man now. By now that graduation should have happened from a believer to a witness. But you are still scrounging around fighting the things that you are supposed to be delivering others from. Some of you have been called to be kingdom financiers but you do not know that kingdom wealth is warfare it's not just about intelligence buying and selling a time comes when you don't buy and sell products you buy and sell covenants you transact covenants there is a level of wealth that has nothing to do with products and services no hmm. you get to a point where it is your covenant allegiance that delivers to you certain possibilities go and ask the devil you can start as a businessman but you get to a level where it is not business you discuss again what shall it profit a man did you hear the word profit there now and there are no products mentioned there is gaining there is losing there is profit there are souls gaining losing profits souls no products there is a level of wealth that does not happen by transacting things. You transact allegiance. You transact covenants. Is someone learning? Why are we here this morning, Jalingo? We are here this morning because there are things we need to shift. It is finished in Christ already. It has been revealed through the word so we are not in confusion as to the will of god so here's how it works finished in christ revealed through the word but it must be enforced through prayer finished in christ his will revealed through the word but it is enforced in the place of prayer your victory finished in christ your victory revealed through the word but the manifestation of it is enforced in the place of prayer. I remember years ago, I saw, I was praying, and I saw one of my parents. I was watching the obituary like I'm watching you. Watching a lifeless body in a coffin with everything and they were conducting the funeral and this had not happened physically when I saw it I knew what that meant and I knew how to change it but prayer but prayer if you think you are powerless explore prayer with understanding and you will see the kind of power God gave a believer if you pray and you pray and miss you will be pained on two grounds one because of the kind of energy you are dissipating your results will not justify it you will be offended you will be angry but when you understand that god gave you a will and that will is engaged in the place of prayer that the real way to say amen is not to say it is to engage it in the place of prayer hallelujah Apostle, why is it that others are rising while others are not rising? The same salvation purchases victory for everyone. But to the one, he's enforcing that victory. To the other, 
he's still giving excuses or wallowing in ignorance do you know the value of knowledge is that you use it in the place of prayer if you cannot use knowledge in the place of prayer and obedience to enforce the victory that is in Christ your Christian experience will be full of things you know but no testimonies following you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my head the lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my head the lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my life the lifter up of my life when you see others rise in this kingdom let me say that again before we begin to pray whether it is in ministry whether it is in business whether it's with their families it is not because they did not have the causes you are fighting you are joking it is not because satan is out to destroy everything god his attack is not unique to you he is determined to destroy everyone who can be a potential battle axe the attack is not unique to you no but i can tell you one thing when you learn how to hold on to the horns of the altar in that place you program your realities in that place you program your destiny i'm not telling you something that i don't do this is the real secret to manifesting the power of god you're a man of god where will your helpers come from you're a man of god where will all the helpers come from do you know them don't try to look for them pray them to your life prayer turns you into a magnet you draw things that are consistent with the will of God in the place of prayer you become like a magnet there are helpers in Yola but where are they I do not know where they are so you go to the central command room and in that place of prayer you are exerting an energy in prayer that begins to gravitate everything needed for your destiny consistent with the will of God in the place of prayer the keyboardist will suddenly show up the young man who will later become your pastor will suddenly show up they may not show up refined but they come the same energy that brought them is the same energy that will transform them when you begin to pray many things happen at midnight Paul and Silas Peter was lucky they had the church to pray while he was sleeping you see the problem with Peter is even though he was an apostle of the Lord he was in danger but the Bible said Peter was sleeping make sure if you are sleeping there are people awake praying for you because if nobody is awake and you are sleeping well if you are Jesus fine and good if you are not that boat is going to capsize soon the Bible says Peter was sleeping but the church said no let him sleep we will wake up but in the case of Paul and Silas nobody was praying for him so the Bible says at midnight Paul and Silas said listen if we decide to sleep like Peter we would die for nothing same prison the Bible says they got up they prayed is that in your Bible <laughs> and they sang loud enough and the jailers heard them this time around because they added worship to it there is a dynamics it was not angels that came it was God himself that came because the Bible says I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise by that formula shall I be saved from my enemies they prayed but then they sang and God who inhabits the praises of his people came the Bible says when he showed up there was an earthquake in the prison 
for Peter the doors were opened carefully but this one there was an earthquake it rattled the foundation of the prison and the Bible says immediately all doors open immediately how many doors financial doors doors of health doors of influence doors of ministry when God came immediately not gradually not step by step not one door per year immediately all doors open someone prophesy all doors open all doors all doors all doors doors to the education of your children doors to your relevance within the land doors to your ministry doors to be structurally established within Jalingo within the Northeast within your station doors of business when he came in response to prayer when he came in response to worship there was an earthquake all doors open hallelujah listen please listen there are three ways to open doors according to scripture the first way we open doors is through the use of the correct keys when you use a correct key not a key a correct key a door is opened the second way we open doors is by knocking through relationships when you knock that door the person at the other end must like you enough to open that door remember the man who was begging bread for his friends in the night he came and knocked the door and said friend there are other friends who have come because you are my friend stand up and open the door for me if you don't understand relationships there are doors that will never open because there is a way we open doors by knocking unfortunately when you knock the doors is because you don't have the key the person who has access to the door must like you enough this is where favor comes in but the third way we open doors when there are no keys and there are no friends the third way doors are opened is by rattling the foundations by force now the advantage of breaking those doors is that if you use a correct key and the person coming after you does not have the key the door will still be closed like your children if you knock and the relationship opens for you and does not open for your spouse they will remain outside but when God comes he shakes the foundation the door is only there because it's connected to a foundation when he pushes that foundation both you and your children and everybody who comes after you listen to me when Paul and Silas were praying other prisoners were not praying but when the doors opened every prisoner went every every they leveraged on the prayer advantage so the benefits of prayer go beyond you you are the one who does the engaging in the place of prayer but your children will eat from it your members will reap from it your family members nuclear and extended will reap from it he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint let's do some prayer Our time is up even if it's just for five minutes is that all right i like you to invest the time that we have no roaming around no looking around no gisting if you are being distracted it's a demon spirit focus your attention on jesus christ go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit oh, 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 oh. Holy, holy, 
Go ahead. Sapra Catapalete Parantas Catapragata. Seca Paracata Pratacata Pelecata Pacatos. Let a Prenta Cataperecata Patos Cate. Sate Leca Parentas Capracatepas. Lecata Pacata Paranto Soto Pacata Pelecata. Racata Prenta Capeta Catapelecata Pos. Sate Saparentos Toto Pentecate. Epracata Patacata Lecate. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. A few minutes. You are saying never again. And you are saying amen. Never again to sickness. Never again to infirmity. Never again to defeat. Never again to limitations. Never again to delay and stagnation. Never again to limitations. You're a man of God in ministry. Pray. Pray the next dimension of your ministry. Pray the next dimension of your relevance. Word of the forces, the arsenals of darkness that sit upon cities, sit upon territories and nations. A few minutes, you are praying. A few minutes, you are praying. Shapa nekapeles, rakate proskate lekate panda kapriakata. Pray yourself into a more superior version. Pray yourself from a weak to a stronger version. Pray yourself from a canal to a spiritual version. Pray yourself from a limited to an unlimited version. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We are still going to pray. I'd like you to engage with understanding. You are going to challenge every other voice. Every other covenant. Every other ordinance that has found its way to your life. That is inconsistent with the verdict of heaven. Manipulations of darkness. Someone lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Every hiding must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every hiding must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every hiding must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. Go ahead and pray. Yokes of limitations over Jalingo, over Taraba State. Yokes of limitation in ministry, limitations in business. I come against you in the name of the Lord Jesus. The spirits of captivity, keeping God's people bound, keeping ministries bound. Someone pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be tired. I'm giving you two more prayer points. Please look at me. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Bible says, Jesus told the disciples, it says let us go to the other side our influence should not be limited here let us go to the other side increase expansion and as soon as they got into the boat the bible says there arose a storm of wind 
many attacks in your life is because of the prophecy for increase the prophecy for expansion that a higher level of grace had left heaven and yet is still not landed upon your life because somewhere in that journey there has arisen a storm of wind but we are going to do what Jesus did the Bible says he rebuked the wind and he said peace be still is someone ready to pray say father shout it again say father in the name of Jesus I decree I declare that every challenge every attack over my life over my ordination over my destiny be destroyed now go ahead and pray be destroyed every attack I want you to pray this with all your heart it's going to be a prayer for advancement let me tell you the truth everything that is alive grows growth is a fundamental characteristic of living things to grow means to increase in size it also means to increase in influence to increase in relevance if you truly love God and love his program you must love advancement because there are certain levels of influence that cannot afford you the opportunity to do much for the kingdom there are music ministers that need to grow 
there are apostles that need to grow there are prophets that need to grow the kind of oil you are carrying on your head you can't be trusted with the nations no there needs to be an expansion of that capacity their glory is in weight and there are certain weights of glory if you do not carry you cannot be trusted with certain assignments someone is ready to go forward you're going to pray it's an aggressive prayer commanding advancement now listen Acts chapter 12 the Bible says there were three gates that were opened this is the last prayer point the first gate opened Peter was out of the prison but he was not out of the prison area the second gate opened then the Bible says when they got to the iron gate there is a gate called the iron gate that leads to the city is that in your Bible not every gate there are gates that bring you out of prison but there are gates that lead to the city that is the gate that comes that controls territorial influence if that gate is not open no matter how anointed you are the nations cannot hear you the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder someone is about to open this gate in the place of prayer for the next two minutes I want you to engage the gate that controls influence you must swing hither and thither it's time for the revelation of the glory of God upon my life and upon my destiny someone shout and say father I decree and declare that every gate of limitation over my life over my kingdom service let that gate be open now prophesy a father be open a father be open go ahead and pray be open a father be open a father be open a father be open gates open open for greater kingdom exploits open for access to greater resources open for more strategic relationships open for higher levels of light open for greater stature in the spirit open A fata be open. A fata be open. Tita and Hita be open. Let the King of Glory come in. Be open. Let the saints in light come in. Be open. Let the work of the kingdom find visibility. Be open. Help the lady under the anointing so she doesn't injure herself. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. We have to wrap up the service. Just help those under the anointing. If you forgot everything I taught you this morning, do not forget that we are co-laborers with God when verdicts come as a decree as captured by the finished work of Christ through the ministry of the word and the intelligence of the spirit that will is revealed to the saints but when the saints have a capture of the revealed will of God their next assignment is the partnership that brings enforcement and one of such as you have learned this morning is the partnership of prayer heartfelt prayer fervent prayer word compliant prayer every dead prayer life in this place every dead passion for prayer every attack 
attack on your prayer life this morning in the name of Jesus I declare by the privilege of God's mercy I lift up this candle with fire upon it and by mercy let your candle be lit again let it be lit with fire let your prayer altar be lit with fire let your prayer altar be lit with fire i forbid you from praying amiss you will not waste your time in the place of prayer your prayer will be fervent your prayer will be effectual your prayer will be result producing in jesus name we pray hallelujah please allow me for a moment before i step down for tonight um i want to plead using standing on uh, the grace upon his lordship at the permission of the bishop i want to make two requests number one i've told you to invite other people but number two like we always do let me request that you come tonight with your prayer request will that be fine sir your prayer request <laughs> hallelujah so use this morning you have ample time up until evening whether you are at your office whether you are back home whether you are just locking up yourself somewhere if you don't have anything to do this conference is not the time to roam around and visit friends you can visit them next week if i were you and i don't have anything to do you go back and smuggle yourself somewhere and flog it out with destiny while preparing your spirit for the evening spiritualize your mentality don't allow the devil cheat you and rob you because when the god sows the word satan comes and sows tears too so you guard your heart with all diligence are we together now invite your loved ones invite co-laborers in the gospel invite everyone that you can find and that includes those who are falling online i understand it's been broadcast on acnn and a number of social media platforms make sure you connect by evening five it starts five on the dot you connect with your faith and let's trust god to do great things in our lives tonight so please do come with your requests even for your loved ones who are beyond this place they can connect online and then they can send their request to you and you can write it let's agree and release our faith that certain things that never again verdict let's agree with god that at it, as it has come by god through his servant let it be so in our lives you believe that shout amen, amen. may god bless you and good morning to you once again Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.